Hello everybody, today I'm just going to be doing a quick guide on how to use the Codex of Power. I've been getting a lot of comments, people are like, how do you get so many legendaries, how do you get so many legendaries, and I ended up making a video about how to get legendaries, but I realized I actually made a mistake because I assumed people knew about this, right, and I was 100% wrong about that assumption. So to help out some newer players, uh, or lower level players that are wondering how can they get legendary aspects, well, you walk over here. This is the Occultist. What you do here is if you click here you'll see your codex of power these are going to be all of the legendary aspects you have unlocked now if you wonder how to get a legendary aspect unlocked you go do a dungeon and you complete it right so you see so it doesn't say it here let's see if i have one that i have not actually completed yet i think i've completed most most dungeons yeah i do i think i only have two left here oh yeah right here so you see it says rewarded on first completion aspect abiding cold so if i complete this dungeon i will get this aspect or into my Codex of Power. Now another way to do it is if you're on PC you press Y, click on Codex of Power and you can see all of the aspects that you have unlocked. Now not every single legendary aspect is in here. Only, generally speaking it's only the general ones and uh, basic ones but there's actually some pretty good defensive ones in here so if you're having trouble surviving right go here let's say I'm trying to increase my defense okay so we're gonna throw these in here we're going to go Codex of Power, and now it's going to show you all of the available aspects you can put on it. So you have things like Aspect of Mending Stone. The duration of my Earthen Bulwark is increased by 6 seconds. This one's amazing, right? So if you're having trouble surviving, well, maybe throw Earthen Bulwark on here. You have uh, Aspect of Might, Basic Skills, Grant 20% Damage Reduction. Now keep in mind that when you do do it this way, it does min roll the affix, but it does give you a way to get base defensive stats. So if you're trying to level up, uh, one of my suggestions would be, you know, try out Aspect of Disobedience. If you're not familiar with this and you're having trouble surviving, this is the best defensive legendary in the game. The reason why is because if you go over here to Armor, notice how it says Non-Physical Damage Taken is reduced according to your Armor Contribution. So in this game, it's very different from D3. Uh, the way resistant, like single stat resistances is not good. But stacking armor is good because it actually reduces all the damage you take of all types, not just one. So if you're having trouble surviving, go ahead, throw the aspect of disobedience. So we're going to go ahead and click this. And I am broke. Uh, oh no, I don't have any coiling wards. So if you are lower level, this is not going to take... Uh, is many crafting materials and it is not going to cost as much. If you're like level 30, I think, I think it only costs Veiled Crystals to do this. Uh, so don't worry too much about that, but you know, once you get higher up, it does start to cost more. So you can see here it says it costs uh, 12 Coiling Wards. So and then you salvage this from, uh, you salvage from and use to improve Legendary Armor. So you're not going to need this in the beginning, but yeah, so this is how you can go and imprint some aspects then if you want to get like an offensive aspect for example we can go here now you can see we have the offensive tab open since we're on a different type of legendary All right you can put skills deal 10 percent increased damage based on your available primary resource when cast you have uh, let's go my class only for druid you have critical strikes with shred deal 20 percent of the damage dealt as lightning uh, you also have things like Shepherd's Aspect, core skills deal an additional 6% damage for each active companion. This one is especially good while leveling. If you did not know, this one is especially good because you can throw your companion skills on and just really juice up your core skill whether, no matter what you're doing, right? Okay, but uh, in order to unlock the Occultist though, keep in mind you do have to have completed at least one dungeon and that is going or be level 25 so you have to complete a dungeon that you have not unlocked an aspect from or be level 25 so this is going to be a real huge tip when it comes to the codex of power do not go through in fractured peaks and do every single dungeon if you're planning on making alts because if i found this out the hard way if you do this whenever you make an alt character you will only be able to unlock it at level 25 whereas you would be able to unlock it by just walking over here and doing a dungeon at level 1 if you hadn't completed it and already got the aspect from it so keep that in mind you will screw over your alts if you go through and fracture peaks and uh, do all the dungeons so if you're planning on making the other four classes at some point just all you have to do is just leave four dungeons up that you're just not gonna do 
until you make that alternate character so you have dungeons to do to unlock that occultist. Okay. So, that being said, that's going to do it for this video. Like, subscribe if you want to see more, and I will see you guys next time.